Rhino in version 5 doesn't offer proper options to use various textured materials on a single part. One may select single faces with Ctrl and Shift pressed, but the material will always get assigned to the entire part. For the simulation of simple diffuse materials, one may come along with simply exploding the object and then joining or even just grouping back those parts which we want to share the same material. This, however, will not lead to valid results with more complex materials, which expect the random mesh to be closed, such as translucent or transparent materials. But also displacement materials applied to just portions of non-closed random meshes will cause issues. Here's a little hack which may help in some of these cases and which apart from an image editor doesn't require any specialized texturing software. One may use Rhino's UV editor to have a peek at the flattened UV mesh. In this case, it's just the default per surface mapping in its flattened state. I didn't unwrap the part or use any of the predefined projectors such as box or cylindrical. Through the highlighting, one may now figure out which face is which on the 3D model. And uh, if one is done with that, one can close the editor again simply by pressing cancel because we didn't change anything. Now I'd like to have an image of that layout, which I can manipulate in an image editor. I will use Photoshop CS6 here, but the same works in a great variety of other programs. In order to get that image, one has to improvise a little bit. First, I will extract the flat UV mesh we have just seen. I use the extract UV mesh command. It's not found in the menus or in the toolbars. One actually needs to type that command into the command prompt. In case you are using a non-English language version of Rhino, one needs to add an underscore in front to make Rhino understand the English command. Now one needs to transfer a snapshot of this mesh to the image editor. The easy but less precise way is to use view capture to clipboard or to file and to open that in Photoshop. The disadvantage here is that the resulting image has some margins and that one has to crop the image first. For this demonstration, I will output a PDF, as Photoshop can import them as well. I make sure that output is set to vector-based and to black and white, which will make the wireframe black. When I now, inside Photoshop's importer, choose Bounding Box, the saved image will crop to just the portion we actually need. Making sure that this happens on new layers, one can now start drawing masks, either by using vector shapes or any pixel-based tool, such as the brush tool. All areas I don't want to appear in a particular layer of an MXM, I fill with pure black. When finished with a mask, one can save it out. A PNG should work just fine for that. One may use the stack of layers in the plugin material editor to create a pile of completely different materials, which just sit on top of each other. The bitmaps we've just created are used to turn on and off the visibility of parts of this layer. To get the opposite effect, one can quickly invert the mask image. The same principle, in just a slight variation, may get used for displacement, which is supposed to appear on just parts of the model. I again brought the UV map into Photoshop. Now I use 50% gray for the background layer. It's the color for all model areas where I don't want displacement to show. Using a new layer, I now draw the area where I do want to see the displacement. When done, I add an effect to that layer, pattern overlay. I may now choose an image, which I have previously converted to a Photoshop pattern by using Edit Define Pattern. For best results, one should make sure that the input map has more than 8 bit per channel. What's nice doing it that way is that the effect stays live and may be further tweaked, and also exchanging the image is easy to do. The last thing I want to do is, is to add a little bit of feather to the margin of the mask, so that one doesn't have an abrupt change between no displacement at all and 100% displacement. There's a variety of ways of doing so. One can use layer mask as I'm doing here, but one can also simply paint with a white soft brush on the layer above. When finished with all this, one should first save the Photoshop file and then export the result as a 16-bit TIFF. When we now load the TIFF as the displacement map into the MXM, the effect is going to be limited to just the desired area without causing mesh distortion and parts being ripped apart.